Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. In this video, I'm going to finish up the rear cross member and start work on the front. So here's a good trick to know, if you have a hole like this that you want to weld up, if you get a piece of copper or brass and clamp it to the back side of the, where you're going to be welding, like this here, then when you weld that up, the weld won't stick to the, br the brass and it'll leave a nice flush finish on the back side of the weld so you won't need to get back in there with an angle grinder when you're done. Alright, so what I've done with this front cross member here is I've got this piece of steel, 
um, laid in right there. This is going to be the base of the front cross member. I'm going to add in side pieces as well to reinforce it and it'll, it'll also make it look a lot nicer. But this is enough to work with right now. So after I drilled this center hole here for that bolt right there, I measured out from there to make these two reference points um, on either side there. And then I can use those to measure from these holes here on the rear cross member. And what you do is you measure from the back left side to the front right side and then the back right side to the front left side um, to make sure that the rear cross member and front cross member are square with each other so that you're not going to be going down the road sideways. And what I've done up here is I got this spindle on here and just kind of set that up to get an idea of how high I want to mount this front cross member to kind of set the ride height relative to the back and what I have for the back now is this beautiful 1941 Ford Banjo rear end here and this is in great shape this is exactly what I wanted for this I love the look of those those banjo axles in the back of a hot rod there's nothing that looks nicer than that so what I'm going to do with this here is as you can see it's got the original spring on there I'm going to take this spring off and put the Model T spring on there which shouldn't be too hard at all because they are the same dimensions from end to end so I should be able to just take that right off and put that one on there and then I can get an idea of how high off the ground the back of the frame will be and then I can see where I'm going to mount the front cross member um, height wise. Alright, so I got the Model T spring on there now. It fits on there very nicely. I didn't have to do anything to it. It is a little bit narrower than the old spring that was on there, so you can see that gap that's left right there, but that's not a big issue. I can fix that um, later on. So I took some measurements and I found out that the center of the axle is about 14 inches below the top of this spring here, which is about 2 inches below the bottom of the frame there once this is all mounted um, in the frame. And that is not under load, of course. So once this it's on the actual car, um, the suspension will compress and it'll be a little bit less than that. So I took some measurements up here as well. And what I'm going to do to get a similar height in the front is I think mount this cross member piece here um, as far down as on that frame rails there as I can and I think that'll give me a similar height in the front because what I want is to have the center section of the frame here from there to there to be as level as possible that's the look I'm going for so in the next video you'll see me probably weld on both cross members I'll show you how I measure them to make sure they're in line and I'm not I won't be going down the road sideways and once I get those on I'll also weld just some temporary um, supports in the middle of the frame there to keep it rigid for now and then I can finish up this front cross member here get the rear mounted get the front axle set up I still have to take that bend out of it um, but that's the stuff that's coming up so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time